Hi guys, welcome to this video. So this tutorial is going to be a basic introduction to Django. So I'm going to teach you the basic concepts you need to get started working with Django. So without wasting any time, let's dive straight into the tutorial. Django is a web framework built with Python. This simply means that with Django, you can build web applications using the Python programming language. Now Django has functionality for both front-end and back-end use, so you can easily build a full-stack web application using Django. So whenever we're working on a Django project, the first thing we need to make sure we have is that Django is installed on our computer. So to install Django, we can just say pip install Django. Now if you are on a Mac, you are going to say pip3 install Django. So I already have Django installed, it's going to tell me requirements already satisfied. But for you, you should go ahead and install Django on your computer. So in a second, as you can see, it says requirement already satisfied. So now that we know that we already have Django installed, let me just close that. Well, the next thing we need to do is just to create our Django project. Now to create a new Django project, we're just going to run a command line, which is Django hyphen admin start project. And then the name of the project, let's say demo project, like this. Now, once we run this command line, it's not going to show anything here. But if I go to this directory where I run this command line, you're going to see now that I have a new folder named demo approach. Once I open it up, I have this boilerplate, these um, files and folders that are automatically created by Django. Now, all these are what well, is going to make up our Django project. But now that we have our Django project in, created, what we just need to do is to import it into our code editor. So for this video, I am going to be using Visual Studio Code. So let's just head over to VS Code right here. And I'm just going to hit open folder. And then once I open folder, Django tutorial, I'm just going to go to the. So this is the folder which I just created my Django project on. Once I select folder, it's going to open that project in this code editor. So now I can do everything I want to do. So as you can see, we have this demo project manage.py so now this is our Django project and the next thing we need to do is to create our Django app so the difference between Django project and Django app is simply this so a Django project is the main project of what you want to build and a Django app is like let me say a subsection under your project so let me use Facebook for an example let's say you are building um, a social media app like Facebook so your project is Facebook or social media, then the notification can be an app. The chatting, which is the messaging platform, can be an app under that your project. So in a project, if you are building a large scale project, you might have multiple apps in that your project. So that's the difference between a Django project and a Django app. The project is the main build and then the app is just subsections of that your project. Now for us to create a Django app, we're also going to run a command line. Let me just go back to my CMD. I'm just going to say python manage.py start app and then I'm going to name the app. Let me just name the app demo like this. Let me say demo app. So as you can see, it says can't open file manage.py. So you know, we created Django admin start project. We created this project in this directory. So we need to enter that directory before we can run another, before we can create an app. So we just say CD demo approach. So what I just did was I entered that folder of the project I just created. Now if I press DIR, I'm going to see that I have a folder named demo approach and I have manage.py. So now let me just run that again. Python manage.py start app demo app. So you can see that nothing happens here. But if I come back to my Visual Studio code, you see now that I have a new folder named demo app. Now this also has its own files. So let me just walk you through what all these files does. So this money.py file 
we don't touch it in Django. It's basically what controls everything about your project. You see that when I wanted to create a new app, I said Python manage.py start app. Also, when I want to run my project on my local hosts, is manage.py and plenty of other things, we use this file. So we don't touch it, we don't do anything to it, except some in some cases. But normally we don't touch this file. So demo project, which is the project folder, it comes with wanted five files. It comes with init, ASGI, settings, URLs, and WSGI. So the one you are gonna be particular about, the one you are gonna use is URLs.py and settings.py file. Now this settings.py file is where we're going to edit a lot of things which i'm not going to go into now but later in this tutorial you're going to understand so in this file we're going to edit a lot of things um our html bring it in our front end and all this kind of stuff and then urls.py is where we specify our urls this just means that this is where all the urls in our project is going to be configured now let's say we have a website like when you go to um let me say like twitter then slash home or twitter slash your username or something like that you can see that those are different urls so all the urls that are going to be in our project is going to be configured in the urls.py file now let's close that up that's all for the project folder and now for the app folder the init.py we do not really want to touch that this admin.py file is just basically where we configure some things for our admin interface which I'm going to show you in this tutorial also and apps.py we don't really touch that but we also use this folder file in some cases uh, models.py this is where we configure the database that we want in our project and then test we don't really use that also but we also use it sometimes but not occasionally and then views.py is where all the main stuff happens, where all the back end, all the coding, this is where it happens. So you are going to understand in a bit. Now that we understand what all this file does, let's just go ahead and run our project. So let's open a new terminal right here. I'm just going to open one. And then for me to run this project, for me to see what is on this project, I'm going to have to type a command line and that command line is going to run our project on a local host on our computer. So I'm going to say python manage.py run server. Now this command line is going to run it on the local host. So um, in a, a few seconds it should run. Now as you can see it says starting deployment server at this URL. So this is localhost port 8000. So now if I just click on it it's going to open it up right here as you can see on this URL this is what it shows us your install works successful congratulations so this is what we see when we create a new project but obviously we don't want to have this we want to have let's say our own page that says welcome to my site or something like that now for us to do this we're going to have to start configuring our URLs which is called URL routing So if I come back to my Visual Studio code, right here in VS Code, I can just close this up. I don't need this for now. Now for us to configure the home URL, what we need to do is to come into demo app. And then I'm going to have to create a new file called urls.py. So right here, I'm just going to import something from Django. I'm saying from Django.urls import path and then we just need to say url patterns should be equals to a list now inside this url pattern is where all my urls are going to be placed so i'm going to say path and i'm going to leave it blank like this so once i leave it blank like this it means the home url but if i put something like slash um, product that means it means my website slash product but once it's blank like this it means the home url so i'm going to say views dot index name equals to index now what this does is that once a user comes to this home url it's going to go to the views.py file 
which is this file right here and then it's going to look for an index function a function named index and then whatever is being done there is what's going to be rendered to the user and then we're just giving this url a name of index but as you can see we are using the view file or using the function from the view file but we have not imported it so we also have to do from the roots import views so like this now we can use view let me show you the comma since it's a list now once i save this nothing is going to happen yet because in views there is no function called index we also need to create that we'll say def index and always take a request and then what i want to show to the user let me just show a simple HTTP response, which means just maybe hello world or welcome to my site. But for me to do that, I need to say from django.http import HTTP response. Now I can say return an HTTP response. Open bracket, And in here, I'm going to write a simple HTML. Let me say an H1 tag welcome to my site and i'm going to close it and i'll save it but now when i come back to my website and i hit refresh nothing changes why is that because all this configuration we did was for our app but remember that our app is just under our main project so we need to also tell the main project where to go we'll come into urls.py file so for us to do this after importing parts here, we will import include. Now this include is going to help us use our own URL. So say path. We leave it blank, and then we say include. And then we want to include the home URL from demo app. So say from demo app dot urls like this. Now this is going to work. If we come here now and we hit refresh we're going to see that now it says welcome to my site now that's basically how to just change from the default Django template and just use your own um, design or something like that so let's come back now that we have this done we have done the URLs we passed an HTTP response what I want to show you guys is templates. So as you can see, we just passed a simple HTTP response, which is welcome to my site. But on a normal basis, what we want to do is to pass in an HTML file. Let's say index.html. That's what we want to show, not just a simple text. So in that index.html, that's where all our front end is going to go. Now, for us to do this, we need to render an HTML page. Now, Django has this, let me say this thing, in which allows it to recognize where you keep all the HTML files. And then, when you render an HTML file, it knows where to take it from. So, let me explain that practically. So, if I close this up, in the root directory, which is the folder that has money.py file, I'm going to create a new folder and name it templates. So right here in templates is where all my HTML files are going to go. All the HTML file I'm going to use for this project. So I'm going to create a new file under templates. Let me name one index.html like this. So right here now, let me give it h1. Let me say hello world. But if I just do like this and come back and hit refresh, nothing changes. That's because we've not yet told Django where to get this file from. For us to do this is very easy. We just come into demo projects, open settings.py. So right here, we'll look for this template. And then in this, we're just simply going to say base underscore there. And then we'll say slash template so it's saying from the base directory which is also the root directory going into the template folder and then anytime we ask for an html file you go into this folder and look for it so that's it we just save it we can quit that 
and now we can come back into the views.py instead of returning an http response now we can render an html page we say render request for index.html like this so we just save it now once we come back here and hit refresh you see now that it says hello world and hello world is what is inside this index.html now that's how to basically just pass in html files in your url so now in this html file i can do anything i want my normal html design and stuff like that but you know when you're working with html there is always um a sister or uh, let's say which we call css html and css always work together now css is an external file which is always attached to the html file but css is basically for designing now let's say we want to change this text to red we can do that using css but how will django know where to get all our css file now we're also going to specify that that's where static comes in now django has this concept named static now static is just like a folder just like templates we're also going to create a new folder named static but what is going to go into that static folder is any external file which we're going to use in this project now let's say any external images css files javascript file audio video anything that is apart from the html is going to go into a static folder so let's also create static so let's just collapse all this we we'll create a new folder we name it static now in static we can create a new file and name it index.css um style.css actually style.css now this is um where the styling will go so now let's style this h1 so we can just give it a simple style and say h1 color should be red now once i save this and i come here and hit refresh obviously nothing happens because first of all we've not yet connected this style.css into this index.html and second we've not yet told django where to look for our static files so let's first configure our static files to do that we come into demo project settings.py we we'll scroll all the way to the bottom so right here in the bottom what i'm just gonna do is to say static file underscore this equals to open bracket os and small letter dot path dot join base there static and then we're just going to put a comma here like this but we are using os os is a python library we also need to import that so we'll come all the way to the top and just type import os so now we have this done let's just quickly come back and hit refresh nothing still happens that's because we've not linked this index to this style now you know anytime you're linking uh when you're working with html before you can add the css you need to link it together so html have this link tag which allows you to connect css with html and it's al always done in the head tag but since here we're just doing some basic stuff we're not um having a tag body tag if you don't know um, html well you can go learn that but if you know HTML, you know that normally we should have an head tag, uh, body tag, title tag, and all this kind of stuff. So let's just simply do that. So for now, we just come all the way up. So up here is obviously where we're going to link it. We'll just do link f now we use something called static static style we 
the CSS and then we close it say type style sheet CSS like this and then we can just close it like this so let's save it and let's go check so when we refresh you see it says invalid block tag static did you forget to load this tag so whenever we are using this static we have to load it so this is the format to load to add any external file in django say load static save it come back and hit refresh so now you see nothing works so obviously it will be from here so right now this should be real and then we can just remove this once we save it and come back and check we hit refresh we can now see that it is red so that's how to basically link our css with our uh, index.html with our template file so now that we have that covered the next thing we need to do is to just basically talk about form submission in django so um let us do like a basic project we can create a new form here and now this form should just have one input the type should be text and then the name should be um let me just give it a name of name another input type should be submit let's put a br here and then let's what we want to let's quickly save it come back and a refresh so what i want to do is i want the user put something here and it's submit it takes us to another url and just tells us what the user says so if i come here and i hit tommy so if you just click submit take us on that url and say your name is tommy so first of all we want to specify that other url and that will be from here let's just copy this so path what we can just say now is um name views dot name and the name should be name we can also come into views.py and create a new function and say name and right here we can just pass an index.html named name so let's create a new file named name.html so right here now we need to pass this form and submit it to this name html it's very easy we can just say action action means when we hit submit where should the data be taken to we want it to be taken to come to urls to the name view come here we'll say name as easy as that and then let's also add a method so anytime you're submitting a form there are two methods which is get and post now when using a get method all the data which you're submitting is going to be displayed in the url bar but when you're using a post method it's not going to be displayed so post method is better for security let me come here if i eat something like a you can see that once i submit in the url bar it says name equals a so this is basically used for search engines and some other things which um is okay to show in the url bar but if for more security let's say user is logging in or paying with his account details bank account you don't want to show all the credit card details on the url bar now that's when we use a post method post method but for now we can use a get so when we want to use a get we don't need to add this once we just uh, put form action if we don't add a method automatically it uses get so i think let me just use post so i'll show you guys how to use it so now we do this and we can save
so now once the user clicks on let me say tommy enter it still takes me to this place but i want it to take me to name so let's save it and then anytime we are using a post method we must always add csrf token like this just to secure the data now we come back here we hit refresh tom submit you can see now that it takes us to this new url called slash name but the url is blank so in this name we want to collect what we submitted we'll say name should be equals to request dot post name so now request dot post name which means we are getting this name input remember that in index.html the name of this input is name we are getting it and saving it in a variable called name so now let's just pass this input to this page so we can just say name name once we save it we can come into name.html use an h1 and we can say your name is and for us to collect what we sent right here what we are doing is this name variable which we have we are sending it into this name.html so we are sending it as a variable named name and then giving it this name variable right here so we can collect this in our name.html using this format we'll just say name once we save it come back now let's say tommy and hit enter now you can see it says your name is tommy and it doesn't show it in the url bar so that's how to use a post method while submitting a form in django so we have that covered now the next thing i want to show you is the admin panel So Django has this built-in admin panel, which allows you to maintain your site from an admin interface. Now, let me show you. If you come to slash admin, you can see we have this login that we need to input and press login. But where do we get that details from? For us to do this, we're going to open up our terminal. Let's just create a new terminal. And then we are going to use a command line to create an admin user. So these credentials which we are going to get, only us will be able to create this type of account so we can log in to the admin interface. So we'll say python manage dot py create super user. So now it's going to ask us for okay. So now you can see it says no such table auth user. Now the reason it's saying this is because in our database, it's saying that we don't have any table as authenticate user. So anytime in Django, we need to migrate our database. So this auth user is a model, which is also equivalent to database. So let's say it's a model and we need to send that model into our database. So Django doesn't automatically do that for us. We have to manually do that. But before we do that, to avoid any error, we need to come into settings.py. Scroll down to where we see installed apps. And then right here, we need to install the app which we created, which is called demo app. We can just do that by saying demo app like this. Now we can save that. Now we come here and say Python manage just py migrate and this is going to migrate all our models into our database see it's migrating migrating done now when i run that command again it's going to ask me to create now you see it says username let me just say admin email admin at gmail.com 
password let me just give it a password now i just created a super user which is an admin user once i come in now and use those credentials and log in you see now it takes me to this admin user so once i click on user i'm going to be able to see all the users i have on my platform so now you see i only have one user which is the one i just created from the terminal so that is how the django admin panel works so now let's move straight to django models models are equivalent to database so it's django creates it as a model and then you migrate it into your database so this user this user database which we have here is a model the name of the model is called user right here all right here so that's the name of the model and then the values which you or the attributes which you have in that model are username email address first name last name staff status so that's the way a database works so the model has different attributes which we're going to migrate into the database so let me show you how to create our own model so automatically django creates two models which is groups and users which we see here but we want to create our own model let's say for products or for uh, messages or anything so for us to do this come to our visual studio code we opt into models.py i can close this so right here we'll create a new model to create a new model we'll say class and what's the name of the model let's say it's product and then we we'll say models dot model and then let's say this product should just have a title like this and then we'll specify if this title if it's a character field which is a string if it's an integer field boolean field or whatever field so we'll say models dot character field and we need to specify the max underscore length which is the maximum amount of characters that can go into this particular field so let's just say a thousand let's copy and paste that let's say that's the title and let's just say owner of that product should also be a character field max length equals to a thousand let's copy paste and let's say price of that product now this should be an integer field and when you are using an integer field we don't pass in any maximum length it can go blank now we save this once we have this saved as i said anytime you make any change to this models.py file we need to migrate so if i scroll up bring back that terminal i have to say python manage dot py make migrations so this command line is going to make all the changes which we add here is going to add it so you can see it says migrations for demo app we created a model called product now let's migrate this so say python money.py migrate now we're going to take this into our database you can see now it has migrated it if we come here and hit refresh it won't show so we already have it in our database but why isn't it showing here remember earlier when i was explaining the files i said that we have a, a file named admin.py where this is going to take everything we want to do about our admin panel so now we can just easily register that model in our admin panel so we can also see it just like we see these models for that we first of all need to import that model say from dot models import product and to register I'll just say admin dot site dot register register product and then we save it now we have it saved if i come here and hit refresh you see that i have products and this product is on that demo app which is the app we created
Now see this product, I can click on it and add a product. Title, which is a character field. Let's say the title of that product is called MacBook. And the owner, let's just say the owner is the admin. And then the price, which is an integer, let's just say 500. Now we can save it. You see now that we have one product object. If we click on it, we can see this data. So it's just like a database. Now we come back here. Now that we've created a model, we've migrated it, we've added it to our admin interface. Let's just fetch mod fetch data from the database. Now, as you know that this model is also a database, we can fetch all the data we have in there. For us to do this, we we'll come here. So let's say in our index, let me just quickly go back to my main page. So right here, under here, we just want to have everything which we have in this model. Let's say all the title of products we have, we want it to list here like this. We can do that. First of all, we need to import that model, say from that models, import product. And then right here, say product, Should be equals to product dot object dot all. Now this line is going to get all the objects, which is every single thing in this database. We come back here. All the objects which we have here is going to get it and store it in this products variable. Now that we have this, just where we pass this into name dot html, we can also pass it into index dot html. So we just say product should be the product variable and we can save. But you know that it's going to return this as a list. So now this variable is not just a string, it's now a list. So we've passed the list to index.html. Now for us to get this list, we need to use a for loop. We need to loop through all the list. As we use a for loop in HTML, we do like this. We'll say for product in product and then we we'll do what we want to do let's just say we want to have a simple p tag and we'll say something like this we can say product dot title where you want to get the title of the products and in html we have to end that for loop so we can say end for and once we save it, come back here and it's refresh. Now you see it says product has no attributes object. So right here in views.py, we said product.object.all. But there is a typo there. It's meant to be objects with an S. So that was the mistake. But now that we save this, we can just easily come back and it refresh. Now you see that we don't have what we need here. Right here, if I come to index, we're saying for product in products. So we say for product in products, but that's not what we sent. Right here, we sent products. So to avoid any error, let's just copy what we sent and then paste it. Once we save, hit refresh. You see now we have MacBook, which is the title of the first one. Now, let's just add another one. Let's say um, Asus owner. Let the owner also be the admin. I'll let the price be one thousand. Now, once I save, you see now that we have two objects. If I come here and hit refresh. We have two objects, MacBook and Asus, the one I just added. So that's how to basically add database and fetch database in Django. So I hope you guys enjoyed this session, this basic Django tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, drop it down in the comments. I'll make sure to answer all questions. Having that said, thank you for watching. Uh, bye for now.